seed here, Chu Tian Chen. In the quarterfinal, that was an epic match. Three sets, 21-19 in the third. He really clung in there well when Chu Tian Chen was looking so dominant, but the defense of Zhribla was unreal. Pranoy came through that amazing semi-final yesterday. So close it was against Chu Wei Wang. 23-21 in the deciding third game. And so both players have been through some incredible matches so far this week. Please welcome from India, H.S. Pranoy. H.S. Pranoy of India making his way to the court. From Germany, followed Mark by his opponent, Zino. Mark Riedler. Both of them wearing that new kit this season from Yonex. White or black with that colorful zip. I'm quite jealous, I think I want one of those. Maybe I'll have to speak to one of the players afterwards. <clears throat> Umpire Mr. Ayung Chi of the USA doing the coin toss. I think Mark Schriebler won the toss and elected to serve. Pranoy taking the far end as we look down. Pranoy currently ranked number 27 in the world. He's the 13th seed here. He's failed to reach the latter stages of tournaments for most of 2015 whereas he was a common name by the weekend in many of his matches in 2014. So let's see if he can regain some of that form at the moment as we get close to the Olympics. He's had some uh, interesting games. Round one against Finnish opposition, 21-19, 21-19. He had a closer, or an easier rather, second round match against Schneisler of Germany, 21-18, 21-13. It was Raj Youssef that I thought was going to be the upset for him this week, but Youssef wasn't on top form. And Pranoy came through, 21-13, 21-18. And then Tanongsak, Sangsong, Bungsak in the quarter final. Another long three-game match, 21-18, 22-24, 21-9, in just under an hour. That semi-final I mentioned yesterday, the momentum shifted quite often. Pranoy was looking brilliant at, at times, looking pretty sorry for himself at other times with so many unforced errors, particularly at the beginning of the match. But he came through 23-21 in the third. Triebler had a qualifier in round one, Koenig from Switzerland. Leikonen of Finland, 21-16, 21-18 in the second round. And as you can see there, that quarter final in 74 minutes against Chu Tian Chen, perhaps one of the matches of the week so far. Certainly had the crowd on their feet at the end. It was an incredible atmosphere in here. 21-19 in that third game. And surprise to me, that game, the semi-final went to three games against Herskainen of Sweden yesterday. I'm not sure what happened in the uh, second game. After Mark won 21-11 in the first, he lost the second to 10, which was a surprise to me, but he came through the third quite comfortably at 21-15. 
The head to head there, Mark Schriebler won up. That was at the Australian Open in 2014. Schriebler won in straight sets 21, 14, 21, 18 the last time they met. Schriebler had a good six months between sort of June, maybe June, July and December last year. That's the latter half of the year. He was in the semi-finals consistently in events such as this one. Grand Prix gold and international series in Turkey, Italy, the Bitburger and Prague oh. Opens in Canada. He was in the semi-finals so much. So a very consistent player, very consistent performer. I wonder whether Pranoy will play a much more consistent game today because he made so many errors in attack yesterday. It really gave his opponent some breathing space. I think Zwiebler will be very happy if that happens here. Great smash down the line from Zwiebler to win that opening point. Oh, the disguise at the net. He made it look like he was going to push that forehand into the corner and just turned the wrist. Great deception from Zwiebler. That's much better from Pranoy, though. That push into the, uh, into the deep backhand of Zwiebler forced the weak return, and what a great straight smash. Whatever happens, this match won't take half as long as the women's doubles that we just witnessed, even if it does go to a third set. Zwiebler just trying to find his range. That one was only an inch or so wide. Disguise on the return of serve. That delayed backhand push. Caught Pranoy out, the weak reply. And then I think everyone, including me, was expecting the straight smash, but that cross-court drop shot was incredible. Great length from Z Zwiebler. Oh, that's nice from Pranoy, though. A bit of disguise on the backhand. He just held him at the net there. Flicked it into Zwiebler's backhand corner. And the clear drifting quite far long. It's 5-3 to Pranoy already. They're really flying through this match compared to the women's doubles we just saw. For me, Prano is looking much more in control today. I'm really pleased to see. It appears he's got a lot more respect for this opponent because yesterday he was really going full out with his smashes, missing the court quite often. The attempt at that net shot, though, just trying to keep it too tight. Looked dis disappointed with himself, putting that one into the tape. Oh, that's lovely from Pranoy. The cross-court smash. Zwiebler picks it up and then just brushing across the feathers with that forehand kill. Sent the shuttle 
in the opposite direction. Great finish. Ooh. That was very close. Great straight smash from Mark Zwiebler. Yeah, well played, Zwiebler. Frano was forced to take that net shot off the floor. And Zwiebler was quick to charge forward and put it away into the body of Pranoy. Well, finding the lines, Mark Zwiebler. The footwork in the middle of that rally was quite incredible. I think it was that sh first smash we saw then in the replay. He looked out of position for a moment, but able to position his body and get round the head to that smash to stay on the attack. It was quite amazing. I think that cross-court smash to finish, though, was a bit nearer the the line than he intended. But Franoy bounces back with some incredible attacking play. And Zwiebler looking very angry with himself. Yeah, great length from Zwiebler. Great accuracy on the lift. Really deep into the corner and Franoy stretched. Mark Zwiebler's most recent uh, match was at the, or tournament, was at the All England. He was in the quarter final against Hans Christian Wittinghus of Denmark, where he put up a really good fight. At, uh, he lost the first 15 21, but the second game he took 21 13 against Denmark's number three. And the third game ended 22-20, so not much in it between Zwiebler and Wittinghus. Wittinghus was made it through to the uh, semi-finals of the All England, and we expected him to be here, but I think his achievements last week, and perhaps a bit of tiredness for, with other events coming up this month, he decided to stay home and rest. Go back to training. But it was a, uh, a shame for Zwiebler. He um, he had a round one exit in the German Open recently. 
his home event, of course. I think he would have been quite disappointed with that. But he's been playing well this week. And very deserved to be in this final, especially after that quarter-final win against Chu Tian Chen. These two guys, no stranger to a third game win. And it's a pretty close encounter so far. 11-10 at the break in the first. the player at their peak in their career, it has to be said. Um, Zwiebler was up at number 12 in the world last summer. And perhaps would have expected to win some of those events I mentioned earlier, those Grand Prix and International Series matches, but it wasn't to be so. Prano, of course, was Prano, of course, was up there as well. He was number ten or twelve in the world a year or two ago as well. Only 23 years of age, Prano, but it seems like his name has been around for quite some time. Mark Zwiebel are getting towards the uh, end of his career. Only a few players able to play well into their 30s. Zwiebler's uh, roughly the same age as Li Chong Wei and Lin Dan, 32 or 33, I think. Great net shot there from Pramoy. Well. Very difficult to see from the replay whether there was a fault there at all, but the shuttle sitting directly above the net and both players' rackets. Well, the players' rackets seem to clash in the middle, so... I think we'd need a slow motion replay for the umpire for him to really assertively work that one out. But the point went to Pranoy, 13-11. That was great attacking play from Zwiebler, but the defence of Pranoy was amazing, really. And then under no real pressure, at the end, the lift drifting well wide. String went for uh, Zwiebler and then he spent a few moments choosing his weapon. 12, Yeah, great consistency on the uh, forehand of Zwiebler. That delay at the net and consistently able to get a good length with the disguise. In the end, Pranoy. Force to make the air, a great net shot from Pranoy. And well watched as that lift from Zwiebler drifts long of the baseline.
And well, Pano is likely to be pretty upset with himself. He created the opportunity. The first match was very well placed. But he snatched at the kill. Signs of uh, the semi-final we saw yesterday when Pano made quite a few mistakes in attack, certainly in the first, first game. Oh, that's brilliant from Pranoy. The cross court clear from Zwiebler didn't have enough on it, and the attack from Pranoy followed up by the disguise at the net. That hold at the net was great technique. Prano now asking for the court to be mopped. <laughs> One of the few tactics I think some of these players just looking for a short rest. Oh, brilliant from Zwiebler this time. Great attacking play, the touch and feel. Some of those net shots really setting up the smash and then again the delay on the forehand, turning the shuttle cross net. Prano was left waiting, he didn't really know what was going to happen and Zwiebler played with such accuracy. Two points the lead now, 17 15. 17 15. Yes, Weebler read the uh, disguise quite well. These two guys, very skillful with the racket. Pranoy attempting the famous Lin Dan trick shot, I think, then with the forehand. Zwiebler was waiting for it, but Pranoy got enough on it to cause Zwiebler some problems, and that's drifting long as well. It's 17 all now in this first game. Well reached by Mark Zwiebler, and that straight smash down the line, drifting wide. Yeah. 
Well, Pranoy playing much better than he did yesterday. Yet, still on occasion, he has a tendency to try and find the lines with some of this attacking play. And at this stage in the match at 17 all, you wonder what goes through his head that was so unnecessary. Oh, around the back from Zwiebler. <laughs> I don't know. I'm hoping he's smiling about it because he has no right to be angry with himself for not winning that rally. I think he feels once he's gotten away with a shot like that and then well back in the rally, he should be able to then continue and you can understand it, but to get away with it in the first instance. You'd have to marvel at the skill of this guy. Ah! Well. For two players of this quality and at 18 all, you have to wonder at some of the decisions these guys make. Could have played a straight neutralising sort of fast drop then. He could have played the straight clear, both of which have a much higher chance at consistency. But going for the cross court from there was quite ambitious and the wrong decision as it ended up. Great rally, unfortunately, for Mark Schriebler. That forehand stop drop didn't quite have the legs. It's given Pranoy two game points. Now at 2018 in the first. You can hear the support in here from the crowd for Pranoy. I would have had him as underdog in terms of crowd support, being so close, Basel being so close to the German border. It's just, well, it's walking distance, actually. And it's Weebler with the lift that drifts long and Pranoy taking the first game, 21-18 in the men's singles final. Advantage, India. Yeah, there were reports yesterday after Mark Schriebler's semi-final that he had something of an injury to, to the knee. You can see the physio there giving him some, uh, giving it some attention. I've no doubt the game's going to continue. No idea what the... Uh, treatment is that's going on that knee but shakes of the head from the physio suggest that uh, Dribbler is not entirely happy anyway back to the action if we get an opportunity we will sack the DJ quite possibly one of the worst 
pop songs in the last couple of years, that, so apologies for the music choice, but at least we've got some entertainment during the breaks here. Oh, great from Pranoy, great defence. Trebler approaching the net with that kill at the net, and Pranoy certainly is in timing the shuttle much better than he did yesterday. Frustration showing by the body language of Trebler. That net shot. Could not have been closer. It seemed to roll along the tape. Shame for him. Great backhand clear from Pranoy, though. Oh, great backhand cross court smash from Zwiebler. Oh, what a rally! Incredible stuff. These two are among the most skillful players in the world. If they can maintain this kind of play, we'd be in for such a great final. Three loves to Pranoy then in this second game of the men's singles final. We just witnessed some incredible skill from both players. Ooh. Again, these guys are making a few errors, but really going for the lines that is millimetres wide. And the frustration as a badminton fan, you witness a rally as we did two rallies ago at uh, two love, well, to three love. And then you see Pranoy with the unforced error on the attack, just snatching at it on occasion. Four, two. Similar there from Schriebler, if either man can keep the shuttle in court but maintain this sort of play, then. Well, there's the result. When Pranoy keeps it in, his attack is frightening. Five, two. But yesterday, almost half of those were drifting wide, and so he went from brilliance to, uh, well, something that was quite poor. Great clear, though, from Pranoy. And there again. It's almost as if he's going for winners. He's going for the line. Finish the rally off early, but there's no need. Oh, great forehand from Marsh Weebler. See the much more controlled smash from Zwiebler. You have to argue that. He didn't put enough on that smash. Either power or direction, really, and gave Plano a chance to come back. Six, three. There's a fine line between playing too conservatively and too ambitiously. Either man can find that zone 
to find that area that players like Lee Chong Wei and Lin Dan seem to be able to do. Either of these guys could quite easily get through this singles final, but that's why there is only one Lin Dan, there is only one Lee Chong Wei. Yeah, well left. Schriebler managing to stay with Pranoy in the second game. Pranoy with mom the momentum, but it's Pranoy that's making mistakes. Oh, that was brilliant defence from Pranoy. That cross court smash was so well placed. And the shout of frustration from Mark Schwiebler. Yeah, the error at the net. It was the approaching Pranoy that perhaps gave or put Dribbler under a little more pressure. Had that, had enough air to come over the net. Pranoy was there to, to kill it, so you could understand Dribbler trying to play so tight. Again, that forehand punch clear. Drifting long from Pranoy. It wasn't out by much. But well left by Mark Schwiebler. Much better from Pranoy. That jump out around the head, stick smash. Working this time for Pranoy. We've seen him miss a couple of those. Great slice drop shot from Mark Dribbler. The angle he created then, it came down so steep. Yeah, well short of the service line, that was a great drop shot. Oh, called in by the line judge. And yes, got a good angle on the camera there for the replay. That was plumb on the line. 10 7 now, Pranoy. Oh, that drop shot again from Dribbler. Great timing. 
used twice in the last couple of rallies and used to great effect. Oh, service fault. That brings about the mid-game interval. It's Pranoy leading 11-8. Yeah, interesting. Uh, I'm sure I've read something about the spin of the shuttle. Of course, the shuttlecock will spin in only one direction. Shuttlecock's built with the feathers overlapping in the same way so that they spin in that direction, and that creates an advantage. For a left-handed player on a certain shot, they, they're able to bring the shuttle down faster with that slice going with the spin of the shuttle. The only problem is I can't remember whether that's the forehand slice for a right-handed player or a left-handed player, but it certainly appears that Mark Schwiebler was able to bring that shuttle down so early. The slice on those last couple of drop shots he's hit. Nevertheless, 11-8 to Pranoy. And Mark Schwiebler, that will start feeling the pressure at this stage of the match, one game behind. Unforced error on the return of serve, just to prove error at the net. Now five points the lead to Pranoy. That's the biggest gap we've seen so far in this match for either player. Pranoy just needs to hold it together now and cut out those attacking mistakes. And he'll be in with a chance of taking this final. That's a shame though, that drifting long once again, the lift. And the court being mopped almost every rally. Yeah, well played, Mark Schwiebler. Good attacking play. He held that net, that net shot for so long and then flicked it over Pranoy's head. It's good disguise on the lift. Forced Pranoy to reply with out any effectiveness, really. And Pranoy now with the unforced errors, he's allowing Schwiebler to catch up slightly, just two points the gap. Oh! The line judge took his time, he wasn't really sure, he opted for in. I'm sat down this line and I have to say, I think that was just slightly out, it was very close, but overruled by the umpire, and in my opinion, that was a good decision. Very difficult for the umpire, however, to see from his position the angle of the feathers covering where the cork will land. And after the line judge called it in after some debate in his own mind, pretty brave decision, but in the end, I think it was the right decision. Yeah, well played, Mark Schwiebler, once again. Well, 14. Just taking the pace off that forehand. At the last second and causing Pranoy to react late. Unforced errors, though. I must admit, this second game hasn't quite had the quality we saw from either player in the first game. 
but it is the final. Pranoy's in with a chance of winning, and we can understand these, these men under a little more pressure. High serve. It was something of a miss hit, actually, that serve. It managed to get a fairly decent length, but it wasn't right to the back line. Pranoy in with a chance of the smash. <laughs> Swiebler showing signs of frustration, perhaps another bad decision. Good smash from Pranoy, too, something I noticed a few minutes ago. If you look at Mark Swiebler's racket position as he's defending a smash, he adopts a very Obvious backhand grip, his racket across his body. You will return a lot of smashes. I would say in men's doubles, you see them use the backhand for maybe 80 or 90% in defense, but in singles, when you've got the whole court to cover, it's much more common to see players adopt more of a neutral racket position so that they can defend both sides equally. Dribbler's favouring his backhand side with the position of his racket in his hand. He's very obviously in a backhand position. And I think if Pranoy notices that and starts smashing down Dribbler's forehand more often, he might get a few more results. We'll see. We'll see if he's noticed that. Oh, great retrieval from Pranoy. It was a good net shot from Zwiebler, but Pranoy able to get a racket head on it. Oh, this is a great rally. Until Pranoy misses, he looks up at the lights. Players are often uh, quick to blame something other than their own timing or their own fault. For me, he just didn't appear to be quite behind the shuttle as he would like to be to hit that straight smash. Yeah, that was most definitely wide. And Pranoy now with the four-point gap at 18-14. Four points the gap, but only three points to take the game and the match and this Swiss Open men's singles title. Yeah, well judged from Mark Zwiebler. He's pretty determined, Mark Zwiebler. He doesn't give up easily. And he's come through some good three-set matches this week already, so let's see what he's got left. Well, son. Truly incredible shots played by both men in this in this rally. And, oh, it's called out. That was so close again. Zwiebler looks up at the crowd, at the line judges, at anybody for help. There's nobody here to help him, unfortunately. I think if we had Hawkeye in operation, he would have called for a review at that point. But... It's called out and it's Pranoy now at 19.15. Oh, incredible reach from Pranoy. And good skill able to turn that back with that 
slice drop shot. He just got a racket onto it. And it was the disguise. Mark Riebler was off into his backhand corner. He was expecting the, the clear. He gambled slightly. It didn't pay off. And it's Pranoy now with match point. Oh, a bit of luck off the net cord. Backhand smash from Pranoy and the forehand drive into the body of Zwiebler. He didn't return it and that's the match for HS Pranoy of India. He takes this men's singles title at the Swiss Open 2016. Great respect between the two men. Zwiebler clearly disappointed, but I'm sure he feels he could have done a bit more in that singles final. Perhaps the injury to his knee causing him some trouble, but even so, he appreciates the crowd. A nice guy and a very appreciative response to H.S. Pranoy, who takes that game confirmation of that result. 21-18, 21-15. Well, the officials and uh, prize giving ceremony just taking place for the men's singles final. It was a good men's singles final, perhaps not a classic. Didn't quite have the uh, well, the entertainment value that we that we've seen with a couple of the men's singles Run matches up. so far this from week. Germany. But a very Mark fine performance Zila. from HS Pranoy. <laughs> and Mark Schwiebler coming out to claim his runners-up prize. <laughs> Presenting the trophies is Charles Keller, the Swiss Open director. And Philip Kunz, who's the, the uh, from who's from Yonex, Switzerland. Pranoy. And a big round of applause for HS Pranoy of India, who comes out to claim his winner's medal, trophy and prize money. Nine thousand US dollars for the winner of the men's singles. And it was a very solid performance in the end from H.S. Pranoy.
who is all smiles as he receives his winner's trophy. And that's really nice to see the respect between the two players. So HS Pranoy, men's singles champion at the Swiss Open 2016. We'll be back really soon for the women's singles final. So it's women's singles up next. The final of the women's singles at the Swiss Open 2016 and probably the match that I'm looking forward to most today. It's all China. Wang Yi Han versus He Bing Zhao. I'm looking forward to it for a number of reasons. Firstly, to see He Bing Zhao play again. She's 18. She is still playing in the World Juniors. She was number one seed at the World Juniors last year. She has been a real giant killer here this week. She took out Ratchan not Intanon in her first round. She was the number two seed. She was then up against PV Sindhu of India, the number five seed or six. She beat Sun Yu yesterday, the number five seed. And again, she's 18 years old and she's unseeded, so she's up against the number three seed now in the final. Wang Yi Han, her teammate from China. Wang Yi Han, of course, right up there in the rankings. There are three women singles player from China. Up there in the rankings, of course, Wang Xixian, Wang Yihan, and Xi Jinfeng. They're all around 70,000 ranking points this year at the moment. And of course, 